Hi there guys, my name is Matt and today I'm going to be doing a little comparison video on the difference between Osmo oils and uh, applying the best finish for birch plywood interior cladding or kitchen doors. Um, I originally finished off my kitchen doors with yacht varnish and they ended up coming out quite brown and looking a little bit cheap. This is now kind of like a test sample on um, finding out which is the best to give the most natural look on birch ply. I want it to look like this, but it just protects it. I've seen online and there's a lot of different um, wood suppliers I've called up who recommended Osmo oil. So I've got four different types of Osmo oil here. My test sample board and also some extra tough interior water-based polyurethane, which is recommended to give a natural look. I've got the raw version of Osmo oil. I've got the matte finish. These are all test samples. I've got satin finish and I've got gloss finish. I'll be putting links in the description for all of those because they've got certain numbers on them that you'll want to use to find the right model number. And basically what I've got is this test sample board which I've sanded up to a 240 grip so that the oil was soaked into the surface. And I'm using a non-abrasive Scotch-Brite pad which is basically like the back of your washing up sponge but without any abrasive compound in it. Um, I found from another guy on Matt on YouTube who who uses that and it seems to be a really good way of applying the oil and it's, it basically abrades the surface very slightly and knocks it back as you're applying it so it gives it a nice smooth finish. You can get these on eBay, I've got this whole packet here uh, for which is 10 sample pads for I think it was 5 quid so I'll put a link in the description for that as well. Um, but really what I want to do is just show a comparison between unfinished birch ply, which is this last section, and the polyurethane, and then the four, the four different ones where we've got the gloss, the satin, the matte finish, and then put it up against this wall and um, see which one I like the most. Your own decision on what you think is the best. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I've got loads of other videos on DIY projects. I'm going to be hanging this radiator over here, finishing off this kitchen, hopefully refinishing these doors if it's not too much work, or just starting again. Yeah, carry on watching, and I'll show you the difference between the samples. So I'm going to be starting off with the raw. Um, Osmo oil, which is the 3044, and I've got this Scotch Bright pad here. I'm just going to put a little bit onto the surface of that pad. It's actually, coming out white at the moment, which is surprising because a lot of the other videos they don't look white in appearance. But we'll see how it goes. Literally, start rubbing this onto the surface. I'm going against the grain first, and then I'm going to go with the grain at the end. So now I'm going with the grain. I'm just going to follow the same process for all of the layers, all of the different Osmo oils. That's done. I'm going to soak up some of that excess. I'm going to get this finished off and I'll go on to the next layer. You can see now that it's getting a lot more even. So you're supposed to apply each of these layers as thin as possible so that you don't get too much pooling of the liquid and it comes out a nice smooth finish. So you can see there against the nice raking light that there is still too much on the surface here. So I'm going to keep on rubbing it back until it's shiny but it doesn't have these marks in there. So I've now just soaked up all of that excess and you can see the surface is a lot smoother here now. Uh, it doesn't have any of those pooling marks on there. I've actually used quite a lot more abrasive pads than I wanted to originally, but this is the first try. So I start off with a little bit like this, and that goes quite a long way. This is looking a bit better. I'm going to be doing two layers in total, um, and also, what I didn't mention at the start is that I've prepared these edges as well, because if you're doing a kitchen top, for example, you're going to be, these are sometimes visible on kitchen doors. So this is an unfinished edge, and then all of these have been finished with um, P260 grit followed by 240 grit to get them a bit smoother. So I'm also going to see the effect of Osmo oil on those surfaces. So now I'm just going to rub it in to these edges as well using the same process. I'm going to show a comparison at the end of what they all look like. Now I'll just open this matte finish Osmo oil and you can see on the raw one it's a lot whiter. You can I'll just put this up to the surface here and you can see that this is um, more of a clear liquid. I'm hoping that this will be a bit more of a natural effect. So applying this now, it looks much clearer. You can see it's bringing out the colours of the wood or the uh, definition of the wood a lot more. Quite a big difference between the two. So the, the Osmo Raw is, is called 304. The rest of them, the matte and the satin and the gloss, all say clear on them. Clear satin, clear gloss and clear matte. And so that really does mean clear because you can see here that the finish is more of a white effect. 
than the, the clear versions, but that might change as it gets, as it, as it dries out. I'm gonna be applying two layers. I'm gonna be wiping this off because it's not a smooth surface yet. So once again, that's now done because the surface is now a shiny, smooth, smooth area. I think these non-abrasive scotch bike pads are doing a really good job of keeping it flat because if you were using a brush, you could probably use a cloth as well. You can see the difference now starting to happen between matte finished Osmo and this. these sections haven't been finished yet, so you can already see the difference between them. So far, I'm thinking that the raw looks the most similar to the unfinished, um, but we'll see how it looks at the end. Now moving on to the man's um, interior extra tough polyurethane varnish. Now you don't usually apply polyurethane in this way, but I'm gonna be trying it with this method because I really like the idea of abrading the surface back, not abrading it, sorry, knocking the surface back just to make sure that those, there's no nibs being introduced into it, like bits of dust and stuff like that, because these are really clean and they don't fall apart that easily. We'll just put it on. Now this is a lot whiter than the other ones. I'm guessing that it's gonna slightly fade the surface. It's kind of similar to the, the raw Osmo though, so I'm gonna say that they're gonna come out fairly similar. So as I'm rubbing it down, you can see the polyurethane is pooling in those areas over there. Um, and what we wanna do is get it to a nice smooth surface. That's just to show you how it's being applied. So here's my halfway comparison of the different products together. So I've got a Another piece of unfinished birch ply over here so that I can see right next to each other what they look like. So that's unfinished, unfinished. And I'm gonna say that the two materials that look the most similar to the original are the polyurethane inter interior varnish by Mans, because those are the two there, and the raw Osmo. I do actually think that the satin and the matte Osmo are my favorite at the moment. But I'm going to leave my decision till the end. The matte and the satin are my favourite because I would like the surface of this wall to sheen but not too shiny that it becomes kind of like a glary surface and I want it to show the definition of the of all of these streaks and bits of natural wood in there a lot more. And I think that Osmo Raw and the polyurethane, they do start to show the definition a bit more, more but not as much as the Osmo does. I think that's the real difference. The definition is better so far. This will need 24 hours for them to cure. I'm not going to come in this room for 24 hours so the dust doesn't move around and settle on it. So I've waited now about six hours actually because it's quite warm in this room. So this is uh, dried out a lot faster than I expected. We've got these, the five samples here. They're looking a little bit lighter than they did when I first finished them. So we've got the raw Osmo on the left here. We've got the, the matte, then the satin, then the gloss, the uh, man's extra tough interior varnish. And I'm still thinking that the raw and the interior varnish Look the most similar to the original. My personal favorite still at the moment is the satin. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a second layer on all these and see if it's any different um, and make my final decision. So I've now applied that second coat to the raw and the matte and the satin. There isn't a huge amount of difference between the first and second coat, but you can see that the grain is a lot more pronounced on the, on the Osmo coatings compared to unfinished. So I've left those to go off for another three hours because they're such thin layers. They're already set. Usually it would take the the, var the interior varnish about 12 hours to go off. It's already touch dry. Osmo products usually take about eight hours. So guys, I've left that to cure overnight for 12 hours now and it's a nice sunny day. So I can show you a really good example of what it looks like in the light. Uh, so I'm just gonna flip the camera and show you now. I would say that the raw is the most like the original. Um, so if you were looking for something with a little bit of sheen on it and to look like the original um, unfinished product, then I would go for the raw Osmo. That's the 3044. So just showing you here in the light, you can actually see the difference in the shine between all of them. The Man's Extra Tough um, varnish is also very, very similar to the original, but it doesn't have a shine to it. So if I show you in the light here, you can see that it's much duller than the rest of them and also even the unfinished. The one that I like the most is the satin um, finish Osmo oil. It's got a little bit of sheen to it, but it's not too glossy. There isn't too much difference between the glossy and the satin. You can see the grain much, much more prominently with the Osmo products than you can with. But I would say with these, you get a shine on them and also you see the grain better. So I think that it's gonna look really nice on that feature wall. There is quite a difference between the matte and the satin and the gloss. Um, but not too much between these. Um, so that's my comparison. And the conclusion I made from that is to go with the satin, which is the 3, 
032. I'm getting that from a, I think it's called Wood Direct or UK, Wood Direct UK. I'm also doing the cladding outside with the UV protection Osmo oil. So I'm gonna order both from them. I'll put a link in the description for them so that you can find them if you want to. I also got the samples from them. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I've got loads more stuff coming on with this renovation project. Gonna be fitting this anthracite radiator over here so we get to see the comparison between those two. I've got actually a birch ply kitchen doors gonna be fitted to the, the kitchen area. This is just a standard IKEA kitchen and we're customizing the fronts. Um, so if you're interested in any of that stuff, then please do subscribe and I'll have more videos coming for you. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.